your seat or on your bed or whatever it is that you are to worship Him. Because praise and worship is it's a sacrifice of praise and worship, but really it's an honor. It's an honor because of everything that He has done for us and who He is to us. So when we come to that place of vulnerability, we're in a position of surrender. So that, that vulnerable position allows us to surrender these things that we hold on to from day to day. We hold on to the stresses of life and these things that have hurt us. But we have to learn to surrender those things to the Lord. That's why when we're in worship, it's so important to participate because it gives you that open line to just give over these things things that are burdening you and surrender them to the Lord. It says his strength is made perfect oh in our weakness. It's made perfect yes, in our weakness. And he says, cast your cares unto me and I will sustain you. from whom all blessings flow. 
Pray, praise him, all preachers here below. Praise him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I'm Rodney Beard, and I'm the senior pastor of the Living Word Community Church, and we're conveniently located at 2304 Hobson Pike in Antioch, Tennessee. And we're so glad you're here. You know, usually in the service, we sing a welcome song that says, we welcome you to the living word. His name is Jesus. That's what we're about. His name is Jesus. So we're so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. And I'm so glad for the privilege of having a voice in this day and time in which we live. Now, if you need prayer, you're welcome to call our prayer line. The number there, and it will be on the screen, is 615-900-4444. And we'll pray with you. Just text us and let us know that you're in need. I don't care who you are. You don't have to be a member to get prayer. And our ministry is so waiting for you to come. And as well, we have several ways that you can pay your tithe and offering. You can mail a check to the church, 2304 Hobson Pike. <laughs> but you gotta pay your tithe. I don't even like to say pay. We can't pay God. We only return to him what is his. And if that's not convenient for you, you can always use Cash App. And that's dollar sign LWCC 2019Pay. Or you can give online on our website, tlwcc.org. Dash give online backslash. You know, because we're not in a building doesn't mean that we don't, we are not still the church of God. And so I want you to understand how vital it is that you don't forget God in the midst of his not forget, forgetting you. You know, our passage of scripture today is, uh, uh, John 13, 34, 35, I'll kind of hover around there for the small amount of time that we have. But it says, and, and I have to continuously reference the Old Testament scripture, if my people will call by my name would on themselves and pray. Jesus told us, he said, a new commandment I give you, that if you would love one another, just as I have loved you, then will all men know that you are my disciples. Who, who are we, church? Are we the disciples of Christ right now? All of the violence and injustice, mistreatment, mismanagement, misinformation, lies. We gotta move beyond that now. 
And the word says that we have been given the ministry of reconciliation. We, we, that's who we are. That's what we do. We, we, we have an ambassadorship right now in the country. Ambassadors. And Paul said, and that's because we understand what it means to be forgiven. We understand what it means to be relieved of our burdens. We understand that because Christ has done for the same thing for each and every one of us. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't we be if we call ourselves the people who are called by the name of God? And so enough is enough Really, enough has been too much. We all need to sit down and have the conversation that needs to be had among ourselves. It almost seems as coronavirus has faded and social justice has taken its place. Well, be not dismayed, God is not mocked. I mean, the pandemic will not be over with until God says so. And so now we're focused on racial injustice. We're focused on police brutality. And that's taken our focus off of our original assignment. You know, the word tells us that we should love everybody the way God loves us. You know, there was a really smart cat one time back in the Old Testament and he asked the Lord Jesus, who is my neighbor? And that leads into the story of the Good Samaritan. You know, and I don't have to repeat it. But anybody that is in need, anybody that is hurting, anybody that is suffering is our neighbor. We're all neighbors. We're all here together. We all deserve God's grace and goodness over our lives, but we have a charge to keep. In the first century, Jews and Gentiles together were bearing witness to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. They did it together. That's why we have the great faith that we do right now. Because they understood that no matter where you came from and whatever it is you believe, we are all in this together. And we all have to be a witness. And when we all come together, we demonstrate the presence and peace of God in our lives. Isn't that what we want right now? Can't we lay down the hatchet? Can't we extend a hand and shake hands? Can't we just talk about whatever it is that we disagree on? And then we'll see the promise of God manifested and featured in Christian humanity. Listen, saints, we have the key. We are the ones. We know what God wants to do in his relationship to man. And if we're ever gonna have a peaceful future as the people we call ourselves to be, we are going to have to join with God and His agenda in the Word. We're going to have to do that. You know, you know, church gatherings are great, but we all know there's flagrant, flagrant racism in our churches and division because of social construction. 
You know, we've been taught to hate this group or that group or that group. We've been taught to attack. But if my people, who are called by my name, would do something about it, and we can, if we repent, if we humble ourselves, if we pray, the whole face of the Christian church needs to change into one face and not many others. And this is evident among churches. You know it, you see it, we all participate in it. But there's a lingering reality about racial division in our country that we have failed to realize or energize or activate ourselves to do anything about it. We just need to talk to each other and understand. In the early 90s, I started a, a, an organization. It was called the Racial Unity and Awareness Center. And make a long story short, we met in Brentwood in a mansion, Koga Center, where I had an office. And, and it was white folks, black folks, Hispanics. I started by putting an ad in the back page of the Nashville scene. And I, I just asked people, do you want to talk about race? Do you want to find a solution? And they came, and they came. And we did that for years, for years. It went on to be something totally different than I imagined. But people want to have that dialogue. We need to just understand where each of us is coming from. This isn't mathematics. This isn't so much science. But this is the construction of a new idea in Western thought, the word tells us, come, let us reason together. Let me tell you how I feel. Let me tell you my thoughts and I'll listen to yours. And let's see where we can find that bond between ourselves. You know, we've been, we've been sick and confused on a false ideology particularly the body of Christ. I don't expect the world to understand what God's de design is for human society. All I know is what he said. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. Love one another just as I have loved you. Love your neighbor above yourself. And we need to get away from these false philosophical narratives that we can't just all get along. And I think the, the, the country is speaking that to all of society now, and not just American society. It's speaking to all of us collectively, collectively. And we can't let this go away and collapse under the headlines. This is a movement that we are seeing that we need to continue until we see Jesus act. Till we see Jesus appear. If we say we love one, love a wonder working God that we've not seen, saints, I'm talking to the saints. And there may be somebody that's listening that doesn't consider us all to be saints. But how can you say you love God and don't love the person you're with? How, 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 how can we do it? How can we say we love God and we can't even see Him other than our in our mind's eye, 
and not love the person sitting next to us? How can we separate ourselves along racial lines and social lines and cultural lines and call ourselves the saints of God and not love the people who are in the struggle with us? This isn't post-racial yet. We don't need color blindness. Those things are inadequate to mobilize people. What we need is the love of God in our heart and the truth of God in our mind. What we need is understanding and tolerance of all others genuine social interaction, not just that, that surface stuff. See, that, that, that will bring us beyond that point of pr what we call practical raci ra racializing. We don't need racializing. We need together as one people, one nation under God, individual with liberty and justice for all. We need to provide a world glimpse of who we know God to be. We need to be able to associate God and reconcile ourselves with all of our humanity. I mean, we, we've inherited a world full of war. We did, it's not your fault. We inherited a world full of dysfunction. We inherited totalitarianism. We, 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 we inherited diminished human rights. We did, we did. We inherited a destructive system of incarceration and racism and hatred. But it's the church that she epitomized the brokenness first. It's us who should show what worship really is. It is us who have been charged to go ye therefore to the world and make godly disciples just like he did for us. Just like he did for us. We need to disengage with negative talk, ugly humor. We need to disengage ourselves. Excuse me. We need to disengage ourselves with hateful, hateful rhetoric. We need to quit demonizing anybody, anybody. And our society needs to demonstrate a brokenness as we kneel before God and trust God for our healing, for our healing, for our healing. We've got to stop accommodating systems that are divisive. We've got to stop supporting things as saints that we know is against the will of God. God doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We need to be stimulated to creative resistance to what the devil is doing in our society. Resistance. The word tells us, if we resist the devil, he will flee from us. We need to resist any kind of oppression for any human being. I don't care who they are, where they're from, what color they are, or what language they speak. Resist it. And there's not even a reason for us to challenge the worldly status quo. You know why? We are the people of God. We just are. 
and it's our nature, it's in our DNA. We need to get rid of stereotypes for anybody. We need to get rid of secretarianism and schisms. We need to wipe all of that out of the body of Christ. I'm not talking about the world because the body of Christ is what will influence the world. I believe in extremism to a degree as long as it's based on the Word of God. And the Word of God never fails. Never. 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 The Word is power. And we have that power. So I want to encourage you today to number one, come to Christ. Just Come to Christ. Confess in your heart. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he has saved us from the scourge of evil that we're living in right now. And then open your Bible and find out who he is and what he stands for. I think you'll be surprised. And if you strayed away, Come back, just come back. And let's all come together, black, white, brown, everything else, and save our nation. God bless you, I'm Rodney Beard. I'm the senior pastor of the Living Word Community Church. We'd love to see you, we welcome you, and I can't wait to see y'all. And like I say every week, I can see you standing here because I know where y'all sit because y'all all sit in the same spot every week. So maybe you can surprise me. But look at your neighbor and say, hey, Pastor B and Show love you. Pastor B and Show love you. And I show do. I show do love you. And Jesus does too. God bless you and God keep you until next time. Oh,